by the con. Absolutely. And you know, being here is a really good first step. Uh, just knowing that there is stuff that you can work on and improve uh, to, you know, work on making the right steps to improve at this aspect of being social. Um, it's something that I, to be quite honest, this guy was my social anxiety for a long time, or my social armor from anxiety for a long time. Um, but I now feel like I don't need him. I love him, but I don't need him. Um, so it's definitely not a prerequisite to have a fursuit, to uh, kind of overcome the anxious feelings. Um, but that's, you know, for me it was my first step. It was an expensive first step, but it was a first step. Um, but there's plenty you can do that don't involve giant carpets. So... <laughs> you have to admit, the giant carpet actually doesn't really help. It's a band-aid to the problem. Because mm -hmm. once you're out, you can't giant carpet all the time. Trust me, I tried. I sure as hell tried. My first MFF was in, well, I think, 50 hours. Um, I sure tried to hide behind it, and it, it doesn't, it's just a band-aid. As soon as you're out, it's, it's you again. You don't have that, that barrier. And so it's really getting down to the root of the problem of why you feel anxious in this fandom, why you have any anxieties in general. Um, anxiety is just a fear. It's a fear of the unknown, a fear of meeting new people, a fear of being judged, a fear of, gosh, go on and on and on. You have your reasons. Um, first, it's great, but it's something you have to overcome. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. water. <laughs> so, um, this is going to be kind of open discussion. We're going to guide it a little bit, but we kind of want you to feel relaxed. And I didn't know there was a door there. I'm pretty sure it's like the Matrix where they open and there's a bunch of doors and that's what that looks like. <laughs> that, was, that was all backstage stuff. That was creepy. That's backstage stuff. I had no idea that existed. Okay, cool. Backstage stuff. Gone backstage. That's intense. Okay, so that's insider information. That's insider information, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're going to leave open discussion. Um, everyone has their own version of anxiety here, um, their own problems that they want to overcome, and we're just going to discuss it as it comes up because you may not realize it, but you might share that with someone else, or you might be too anxious to even raise your hand and ask. Mm -hmm. um, Disclaimer, we are not mental health yes, professionals. We are, professionals. We are just speaking from our own experiences with anxiety. Um, so take everything you hear with as big of a grain of salt as you need to so we don't get blamed for wrong information. Yeah, if you take this and you go do something stupid, um, I can't be liable for that. But if you go out and have a bunch of fun and meet a bunch of new people and really kind of explode and grow your, your, um, your friends, then uh, yeah, that's my, that's my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Some of the basic forms that we tend to see, and, and a lot of people don't, it's unfortunate. It's great that you're all here. There's a lot of people that aren't here that should be here because they're actually just too anxious to come. Uh, we do do this as a webinar once in a while, and we're actually uh, periscoping it, I believe, as it is right now. Um, and so this is something, if you're too anxious to come to a panel, or you can't attend a con, that, you, know, you can actually go online and cover this. So the people that you'll see um, that have a lot of anxiety issues are the ones hanging out the sides, um, the ones who are too afraid to approach suitors for whatever reason. I mean, I don't know, rare giant weird animals, that's kind of scary. Um, Especially this guy. I'm awful. I always smell, I smell like um, pumpkin spice. You do? That's great. Um, again, you all have your own reasons for being here, and we're just going to kind of cover them as we go through it. Uh, the big thing to remember is we're all fuzzy animals on the inside, and that's why we're here at this convention, and that's why we're in this fandom. So one of the big fears of anxiety, right? If you were to walk up to a random person on the street, you're going to have to find a way to click. It, you know, hey, we're at Starbucks. Okay, we have something in common, right? Here at this fandom, you all have something in common. You're all fuzz butts on the inside. Um, and so... A really easy way to connect with anyone easy. you pass in the hallway. I'm Pearl Husky. Cool, I'm so-and-so. Bam, there's your connection, your furries. 
and it's, it's real nice. And that, that, that barrier is down. You're all here to have fun mm -hmm. and see giant carpets, expensive carpets, mm -hmm. walk around and sweat all day. <laughs> and white carpets. Hug the carpets. Hug the hug white carpets. That's so important. Hug the wagging carpets. The wagging cup, that's super important. They had me wagging. <laughs> um, always ask before you yes, push. Yes, but, that's important. Um, so yeah. Um, do, do, I, I guess let's start by anyone have anything they want to share as far as either stories of how you've overcome anxiety or stories where you feel anxiety has kind of gotten in the way of you otherwise enjoying what could have been a good experience but somehow it stopped you. Yeah, it's something that you just go, hey, you know what, this is, I'm here because of this reading. Now, don't feel pressured, don't feel like you have to answer questions, you have to raise your hand, but this panel is going to help you take that first step to really breaking out of your shell, which is ultimately what it is. You're afraid of being judged, you're afraid of meeting someone new and not being able to connect and not being on the same page. You're afraid of them thinking lesser of you or one way or another, not being on equal terms. But we're all here. Uh, we're all equal. And it doesn't matter how much money you make, you're a first suit, you don't have a first suit, what color you are, what orientation you are, you are here. We're all equal, we're all furries. And there's nothing to be afraid of, really. I mean, I can walk up to any of you at this point in time and go, hi, I'm Pearl Husky, here you are. And now suddenly we have a connection. And now I have someone, I may not remember their names, I can't remember names to save my life, but I'll remember their face until the day I die. I like that idea. Find two people around yeah. you that you don't know. Introduce yourselves.
The hot spots are working in here. I can't hear it. Take just another minute or two. Continue your conversations. This is a great chance to build a conversation that you can use after the panel. And you have a new friend. That's not turning off. I know we're just <laughs> What do you mean by help? Smell it's a It looks like it's not that we need to find a single network. I I did I know I had it in my backpack and then I was messing around. Alright, let's make our way back to our seats. The teacher in me is coming out. Alright, class. If you can't get Wi-Fi, I can't help you if you don't have Wi-Fi. I'm a former teacher. They're just full disclosure. That's what I recommend. I want to be a teacher, but I usually just tutor a lot of small group. Yeah, to control my anxiety. Absolutely, I totally feel that. All right. Oh, hey. Oh, that's that's a hot mic. All right. Thank you for indulging in that little bit of an uncomfortable uh, situation. We, we put you into two uncomfortable situations already. I don't think we have any more planned. <laughs> yes. Maybe. But, uh, but no, seriously, thank you. Um, it's nice to see the different conversations going on. It's nice to see everyone kind of jumping in and going along with some of these crazy ideas that we have. So we do appreciate it. Like room over there. <laughs> it's the Huskies. Huskies. Huskies are you social butterflies. I know, right? Side butterflies. Yeah, they're funny. Over the wall. So the first thing that I kind of want to talk about, because it's a huge problem for me with my anxiety, still as I fight it, um, is this idea of self-fulfilling prophecies. You get yourself into a situation and you say, gosh, this is going to be awkward. Gosh, I don't know what I'm doing. And all of a sudden, I'm so that's, nervous. I'm, I'm so, so nervous. I don't know. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. That's the thing. I can't. It's not a, I won't. That's I can't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is unnecessary. But it is going to be your biggest obstacle and hurdle to overcome as you are working on your social anxiety. Because, like I said, I still fight it. I still, you will, you will be really, really lucky if you ever catch me at a party. Mm -hmm. Not because I don't like the scene, not because I don't, but because I tell myself that I'm not going to have a good time. But I tell myself that I don't know what to do in a party scenario. Somebody's being murdered. <laughs> That's the war panel. Oh! I'm glad I'm over here. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, like, I've, I've been to parties before. I even host them from time to time. And when I host them, I'm in control. So therefore, I feel comfortable with the situation. But as soon as someone else is in control, now I'm not in control of them anymore. Now I'm at their, their whim. And so when I go up to a room party, um, which is a big aspect of cons at times. Um, I feel very out of place because I'm not in control and I feel scared that I, that I'm, well I did, I'm not in control. I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know who's there, I don't know everyone's there and I kind of back myself into a corner. Um, all throughout high school, which was a long time ago. Yeah, you're old. Um, <laughs> shut up. That's okay, I'm old too. <laughs> yeah. You know, all throughout high school, you know, we have your high school parties and I was the kid in the corner, back against the wall yep. with that one friend I, I knew. Because the one that person that invited me is dragging me, kicking and screaming to go. Um, but there's been these times where I go, hey, you know what? No, I'm going to have fun. I'm going to really, really, really try. And I know a couple people there, and we're just going to not have an amazing time. But it's still a battle I fight these days. And still, you can ask anyone that's ever invited to a room party 99% of the time. I tell them no. I, it's, honestly, it's not that I'm not going to have fun. It's that I am too. That's something I haven't overcome myself as a hurdle. Um, Talking before about the um, I can't um, versus I won't and, I, and I'm too scared. 
Who here's been on a roller coaster before? Remember your first roller coaster? That first big coaster? And you're like, oh hell no. <laughs> and your friends are like, it's gonna be fun. And you're like, uh-uh. Uh -uh. All the way up, you're like gripping this shit. I'm not, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. It's gonna happen. I can, I can see space. I'm gonna die. Uh, look, there's my house. And then it happens. The big drop. And that just, that crunching your chest. You're like, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. And they have to stop the roller coaster. They have to stop it. And then it happens. And you get off and you go, holy shit, that was awesome. I'm going again. And you know, um, before I walk. <laughs> but then you go into the next coaster and it's still that same thing comes back up. You go, oh man, this is scary. This coaster's scary. But then you do it anyway because you've already done it once. And it's less scary every time. I still go on coasters. I'm an enthusiast. I travel all over the country. Um, I live near Six Flags, uh, Magic Mountain, so I get to go that pretty often. And so I get to go on Goliath. And Goliath still scares the crap out of me. It's still, it's a big coaster with a lap bar. I'm just like, no! Um, every time, but every time I kind of force myself to lift my arms up a little more. I know I'm going to be safe. I know it's okay. I'm, I'm protected. And I've done it before. Anxiety is one of those things that's never going to go away completely. It's going to be something you're going to be able to suppress and then you're going to be able to overcome. Um, but it's always going to be there. It, it's always going to be there. It's going to come up to you going, you know what? No. Today you're going to shut up anxiety because I'm going to handle it. And we're going to go meet some new people. I'm going to go, I'm going to conquer that coaster. I'm going to go jump out of that plane, which was a really tough one to overcome. Um, I'm just going to go do something I've never done before. I'm going to stay uncomfortable for a little bit. Mm -hmm. If you're comfortable, if you're in your comfort zone, you're not pushing the boundaries that you can do. Right here, what you guys have already done, you've already pushed your boundaries. You know, you came in, you sat throughout the entire room, in all four corners of the room, and now we forced you to come forward, and then we force you to meet someone. And as much as we would like you not to have to do it again, we're probably having you meet someone else in a little bit, someone you haven't already met. Because I know some of you met someone that already you already knew and cheated. Um, we're watching. Yeah, I know. I saw who came in together, and you guys were talking to each other. It's okay. Um, and so, once you've already overcome these great hurdles, you've met new people. You're now closer to other people than you typically are. They're inside your bubble, your safety bubble. Um, these are huge steps. You've already overcome them now. You go sit down at, let's say, now it, it may suck, <laughs> you, it still may feel out of place, but you've done it, right? And so now, you know you've already done it. Dance comp comes up, that place is typically packed. You sit in the back, or you can go, you know what, we're all here for one purpose, one reason, we're here to watch Buzz Butts dance. Scoot forward, <coughs> and try to get to the front. And now you're pushing yourself in that limit, that boundary, you're overcoming that anxiety of I have to hide in the back. I have to stay in the back of the classroom. You can't move to the front. You move to the front, you're going to find it to be a little bit more enjoyable. You get to be closer, you get to see the, the hair flying and the dancers and the bright lights. Um, and everyone around you is here for the same reason, which is the fun part, love cons. Because everyone's, you're here, you're in this room for the same reason. They're in there to kill people. <laughs> right? They're in there for the drum circle. There you go. <laughs> Kumbaya. Being really calm. <laughs> you have four opposite on this side. Oh, I actually know what's. So, and the uh, the important thing to remember is for some, it may work to just jump out of that plane. Yep. I got pushed. And <laughs> ten thousand feet and just. Balls to the wall, go for it. But for some, maybe the plane's still on the ground. Yeah. And you jump out. So if you're a you can just get on the plane. <laughs> well, hopefully it wouldn't hurt that much. TSA's not going to like that, by the way. Don't jump out. <laughs> no, please don't. Um, baby steps are okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Go at the point where you are not going to stop yourself because you're making yourself too uncomfortable. There is a balance to be struck of, okay, this is a little weird, but I can do it. And this is, this, that's too much. <laughs> know what your body is telling you. There's a difference between the feelings of minor, uncomfortable, and something's not right. If your body is telling you something is not right, stop. Yep. Dial it back, 
figure out, okay, this is too much. Where can I make a smaller step? And then slowly, smaller step, smaller step, smaller step. Pretty soon you're past that big step you were trying to make in the first place. Yeah, when I was getting into dancing originally, it was at Megaplex. They, uh, there was a dance circle. I had already gotten up on stage a few times at this point. That was one of my big hurdles was dancing, because I, I suck at dancing. I'm very white boy at it. And so I forced myself to get up on stage because Rekka is a good friend of mine. And he was like, dude, just come up on stage. And I'm like, uh, no, um, I'm going to hide in the back. And then eventually I kind of worked my way up. And then with a good push and a kick, I was up on the stage. And I hit back the entire time. Now I'm up to the front, baby steps. Um, just don't, don't jump off the stage. <laughs> yeah. Again, again. So there will only be two of us. Um, the big hurdle that I still haven't overcome, and this is that boundary where I don't feel comfortable, is the dance circles on the floor, where you have a bunch of people circled up, and then one person or two people go and they kind of dance off. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I went up to one at Megaplex, and I was just watching, I was chilling, and one of the one of the, uh, the the lead dancers that was there running the the dance floor came and said, "You're next," and I said, "Uh, <laughs> no." And he said, no, no, you're going next. And he started to mention before, and I was like, no, this, I, I'm not comfortable. And he said, okay. He, read, he picked up on that, and he kind of backed off. And I approached him later, and I was like, I, I just don't know why. As soon as you said you were next, I seized up. It's like my chest was tight, my body locked up, and I said, absolutely not. I was now so far out of my comfort zone that you're going to push me in front of a bunch of people to stare at me. Dance stage, no one can see what's going on up there. A bunch of drunk people <laughs> dancing at 3 in the morning with bright lights all over the place. No one cares. And so it was easier for me to overcome. Now I'm in a circle where people are literally watching me dance. Oh, that deck took everything out of me. One of my big steps I'm still trying to overcome to this day. It's still that hurdle. Big steps. I'm dancing more. I'm working my way up. And there's you. Who just doesn't care. Not true, actually. <laughs> I have like only dance. ever en entered dance competitions as a duo. Mm -hmm. One of my big pieces of anxiety that I am constantly working on and I'm not doing too successfully at right now, is the ability to dance by myself. I approached JD Puppy before Anthrocon last year and said, can we do a dance together? That was a big step for me because I haven't danced since high school and show choir and all that. I was in show choir for like seven years. But this is a whole different world. And that was a piece of anxiety that it really took a lot. One, Who's, everyone heard of JD Puppy? Most of you have. Pretty popular fursuiter. Really, really talented, talented gentleman. Mm -hmm. But there was one level of anxiety, just approaching him in the first place. Secondly, this was going to be my first time on the stage at a furry con, doing anything. There's layer, layer number two. I nearly did not get up on that stage at Anthrocon 2016. I was backstage having a meltdown. That's what that's the breaking point. I was probably stupid to try and push through it. Honestly. My body, I was shaking. I was nearly wanting to just curl up in a ball in the corner in the fetal position, just rocking back and forth because I did not know what to do with myself. If your body gets to that point, don't put yourself through it. You'll get there. You'll get to whatever point you want to get to. But you don't have to get there tomorrow. Maybe it's a month. Maybe it's a year. Maybe it's five years down the line. You'll get there. Oh, is that we've gotten rid of sink or swim? It's now <laughs> swimming classes. So just throw you in the deep end, go good luck, have fun. But sometimes it is good to sit at that level of discomfort, even mm -hmm. for a minute yep. before you back off. If you off. hit a level of anything, once you hit a level of anything in your life, you, now you can obtain it. Whether it's muscle strength, business acumen, anxiety. Anytime you push that boundary, you go, this is my limit, push it a little bit more, you're the number extended. So the next time you come up to this this one point, it's not as bad. And now you're going a little bit further. And now you can push it and push it and push it. Lifting is a really, really good analogy. Because if you try and do too much, you're gonna hurt yourself. You're not gonna be able to do it. But dial that back 50 pounds 
And maybe it's just a little more difficult than you'd like. But you're gaining strength. You're making it easier the next time. And that's the same thing you do with your anxiety. But you don't win, you just get a little better each time. If you stay at the same weight forever, you're never going to get no That's the comfort zone. Yep. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. If you're comfortable all the time, you're in your bubble. And the only way we as people grow is by pushing that bubble. It's by leaving the safety zone. If you're always in your safety zone, you're probably at home. You're probably with your closest friends. And like me, playing World of Warcraft. <laughs> it's a very safe zone. I have seven million other nerds I get to play with. Um, that I never have to see when I don't care for their feelings. So I get to hide the entire day. Uh, not, not smart. It's not the safe thing to do. So I actually balance it out. In the mornings, I take my husky out for a walk. We go out to the beach. I go to Starbucks. And then I sit down. And he's kind of my inlet. My, my husky's kind of like that. Oh my god, I love your dog. Yeah, I know. I ate him myself. <laughs> he's so pretty. Thanks? I don't know how to answer that one. Thanks, yeah, I, I sprayed him earlier. Got <laughs> great coloring. Uh, handmade. And then, you know, then we get to talk. And now we have that connection to be able to talk. And now I've met someone new. And now, now I get to go home and curl for the ball and play World of Warcraft because I get to hide behind the computer. Um, there, there's finding that balance. You don't have to go, hey, I'm done with the social anxiety panel. I'm gonna go meet every fur out there, all 4,000 people. Um, that's not my recommendation. I still don't do it. Um, I will meet a lot of people, but I try to meet you know an X amount every every con, a couple new people every con. I room with a, a new person every con. Um, push it a little bit. You just keep adding to it. Don't go hey, I only have like two or three close friends here, but man, I really wish I knew everyone. Yeah, that's cool and all. Um, but you're gonna overwhelm yourself, and you will actually revert. And if you push your boundaries too much, you'll actually digress and you're gonna go back to a worse anxiety. Mm -hmm. You're gonna push it, you're gonna collapse, you're gonna break, you're gonna go back. You don't want that. You have to continue to add strength and grow and build upon yourself and that confidence, a lot of confidence. You have to have confidence in yourself to meet new people. They're just as strange dog fuzzy creatures as we are, right? We all no, have really <laughs> strange people, right? Uh, we dress up as giant animals and we go to conventions and we spend a lot of money that we don't have. <laughs> so, we make poor decisions to all be here at the same time, yep. and uh, so you have to have confidence in yourself that this guy is no different from that guy. They look different, they have different backgrounds, we're both fuzzy people, and we're both here to have fun. Um, so what's the difference? Why care? At the con, everyone's equal. So just add a little bit every time, you'll maybe set a goal, hey, I'm going to meet five people, the whole con. That's going to be today. Just, I'm going to meet five new people. I guarantee you, the next time you go to, you're going to see maybe one of those people somewhere. All right? And now you have that one person that says, hey, this is my friend. This is Chusky. You know, we've known each other for a while. If I go to any con that I've never been to, Furpoc, I've never been to Furpoc. He goes to Furpoc. I go to Furpoc with him. I now have him and then his group of friends. And now I get to meet a couple of them. And now I've added a couple people into my list of people that I know. To the point where I've done this for years, and now I run around BLC, I'm like, hi, 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 yeah, I know everyone. Okay, I'm tired, let's go back. Yeah. Well, I mean, let talk about uh, FWA 2015. Oh, gross. So my first con was FWA 2015. I had just broken out the fan. I had just made an FA account. I just, which is, the, which is the, if you're not FA, you're not furry, right? <laughs> uh, so I made my FA. I didn't even have my Twitter yet because I was bad furry. Um, and Telegram didn't exist. And so, I didn't have my suit. I had barely designed my persona. I've been sitting on Second Life for years at this point in time. And um, I had the concepts and designs. I went to FWA 2015. Um, I had a general idea. I was already ready for, I was first shopping. I was already ready for first shoes. I just didn't know what I wanted. Um, I had a general idea. I'd seen like the hundreds of makers and I've seen their styles. And I kind of had limited it down to maybe 10. And there was one that kind of caught my eye in particular. Um, his name is Proshki. He's a dream machine suitor, and I kind of I like the husky. Uh, I like I like everything about it, and um, but I didn't know him. Now, I don't remember how we met. Oh, I'm you, old. You uh, you did have Twitter at that point because you DM'd yeah, me. I did get a Twitter asking account. Asking about the, after the, uh, the dream machine photo shoot. Anyway. So it was, I got it for that I think. Yeah. I, think I got Twitter for this reason to hunt down furries. Um, <laughs> guys are using to find on Twitter. Um, <laughs> 
black puppy dog, gotcha. Um, and so I wanted to find the Dream Machine suitors. And I wanted to go to the photo shoot, and I didn't know where to, so I was hiding on my computer still. But I was like, yeah, okay, so I met Chusky. I uh, mean, they were like, yeah, come on down. And I met Tally, and you know, who was the, Tally Tilly is the, the Dream Machine owner. She's the one that makes the suits. And she's like, yeah, come on down to the photo shoot, no problem. I mean, I was like, I don't have a suit yet, but can we shoot? Just come on down, you know, you can see the suits, right? It, photo shoot time comes around, I don't go. I stayed in my room. Um, I actually cried a little bit. I was too scared. I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to go out into the, the hotel room. Um, I had already seen a bunch of the top name suitors, you know, the big suitors that you see all over uh, the social media accounts. And they were there, it's FWA. And I was like, oh my god, and then I took that one step, and now it's, that okay. was miserable for me. Um, I almost didn't go to any of our after that. I was really disappointed in myself. I was really sad. Um, I did a lot of self-thinking, self-reflection, and realized that I'm not the person I thought I was. I thought I was a lot more confident in myself until I was put in situations I wasn't comfortable in. Put me in a boardroom with a bunch of people, executives, and I'm in my comfort zone. I will talk business all day. I will talk IT all day. Put me in a group of furries that I had no experience with. Now, so far out of my comfort zone, I was scared. Scared. Crying in my bedroom. Eventually, I overcame that. Uh, MFF, I got my suit, and this was part of using the suit as a barrier. I got my suit, um, and I was able to use that to break in a little bit. However, my first interaction with Kuroshi um, was I was standing out in front of MFF, and he said pro, and then tackled me. I was out of suit. I had no idea who this guy was, because I'd only seen him in suit. And I thought it was really weird. Um, <laughs> and that was kind of like that, boom, broken in. It was instant, right then and there. I was just like, wow, okay, I've now just been tackled by some random guy, I don't know who it is, and they know who I am, and this is gonna be fun, cool. And then I found out who it was, and it was great. And then I met up with Chusky, and I started meeting a couple other people. And those two, between Puro and Chusky, between the two of them, I had grown a network so large that I know thousands, thousands of furries. Um, I can go around and point out faces and in which hotel I met them at, in which con, and because of that network has grown. Um, still fear, still an issue, but I've done it so much that I'm comfortable with it. I understand what's gonna happen. I'm gonna meet them, we're gonna say hi, we're gonna hug for all of a uh, weird awkward tag seconds or so, and then we're gonna split. And then I'll meet them throughout the rest of the con periodically. I'll you know, high five, give a hug, and then we're done. But then I get to keep up on Twitter and Telegram and FA, SoFurry, and the 50 other social media accounts. But important to know, that is a multi-year process. That took years. It is now two years later. And uh, it was a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It took me 15 cons. It was a lot of He's work. He's also crazy. I'm a narcissist. <laughs> I am also a masochist, and uh, so you're a husky. I am a husky. Yeah, actually, yes. Um, I, I knew that I'd broken that barrier at FWA a little bit. I knew I, I had a lot of self-reflection. I'd actually gone to a couple smaller events in between MF or FWA and MFF that year. I went to local events, a local con or a local like the furry meetups. A lot of big mm -hmm. cities have them. Um, I had been invited for months and months and months. I had been living in Columbus, Georgia for almost a year at that point, and they invited me every month, and I didn't go. I was scared. I was like, nope, I'm not going to go. I don't know these people. They're weird. I don't want to go. I'm afraid. I'm scared. What if they don't like me? After FWA, I realized that I, if I want to have fun in this fandom, I can't sit back and not meet the people I want to meet. I can't walk up to someone like Cosmic and go, hi, I'm pro. Just another person. I can't walk up to anyone and introduce myself and then be scared to do it. I had to overcome that. And so I was like, fine. Eventually, I had my ex-husband at the time push me out the door, because he knew it was just a crippling year of mine. And he said, we're going to go. And he supported me there, my friend. Supported me at the event. He had a miserable time because he's not furry. And he thought it was really weird. Um, but I actually had fun. I was super fun. I met a couple people. I don't remember any of their names. I remember their faces. Um, but it was fun, and then that was kind of leading into it. That is a small anime con with like 600 people. I showed up in a fursuit. That was cool. That was my first time suiting. Really shitty photos. It was really bad. I was just like, um, <laughs> doing the fursuit stand. Um, and that was it. And that was the baby steps. Mm -hmm. And then meeting Puro and 
And Arcturus were now the, the true furries that I had met at FWA now, or from FWA, not at MFF. And that broke me out. And even at MFF, I can go back and look at pictures. Pictures are a great way for me to realize the people I've met and haven't met. I can go back to MFF 2016, 2015. 15. 2015, and I can look at photos. I have pictures with five furries. I have 20 pictures with the same five people. <laughs> but those were my five people that I met and grown attached to. And now I know those people. Haven. Yeah. Um, I don't remember any of those. <laughs> um, and so that's kind of what happened. And now I've grown. Next con, I met that one person. Dude, I know you. We MFF, right? Yeah, MFF. And I met their peoples. Baby steps. Yeah. Don't be going out there running around going, I'm going to be the freaking king of the BLFC, the really tiny big con. Yeah. <laughs> it's really big. It's pretty oh. big. This con's big. I haven't been here for two years, and the, the change since uh, 2015 uh, is crazy. We're almost doubling every year. Yeah. yeah. It's insane. It's awesome, but it's insane. Um, so I want to kind of go back to the uh, self-confidence issue. How are we doing on time? We got 20. What? Awesome. Yep. Um, we got a good time. Self-confidence is something that I have struggled with for a very, very long time. Uh, let's see, four years ago now, three years ago, I was 325 pounds. Mm -hmm. I'm not a tall guy. I'm 5'6". Um, and I constantly have to fight that inner fat kid. But I, honestly, this sounds super cheesy and hokey, but it's what I do and it's helped me. Every morning I look in the mirror and compliment myself. If you start to tell yourself something enough times, self fulfilling, you're going to start to believe it. And you're going to start to act that way. And that is the single biggest piece of advice I can give as far as improving your self image and your confidence level. Because when you start to believe it, other people will start to believe it. It's not, I can't, then I won't. You, it's not that you can't. You, you can. I can literally shake your hand. It's not that you can't. It's that you're not confident. You won't do it. Be confident in yourself. Yeah. You're brilliant in your own right. Everyone's here for a reason. You're all going to succeed in one way or another. Artists, writers, personalities, business, IT, hell, music, whatever you can possibly come up with. You're good at it. Video games. You know, 15 years ago, if you're a video gamer, you're a nerd. And you weren't going anywhere in life, right? That's what it was. Yeah. Oh, you spent all day playing Zelda? Uh, go out and get a job. Go play, you know, go out and play sports. But now if you're, a, if you're an ace gamer, what's that, 100,000 a year? Right? So be confident in your abilities. Everyone has some sort of talent and trait mm -hmm. that you can build off of that makes you better than, than like, you actually really give yourself credit for. A lot of people see themselves for a lot worse than they really are. Absolutely. We're all our own worst critics. Absolutely. So everything you're telling yourself is negative about you. Most of the people out there aren't going to notice mm -hmm. or care. I hate my nose. God, I hate my nose. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to get surgery to fix it one day. I've broken it so many times. But no one notices. And I'm like, dude, can you not see that? And like, no, dude, I can't see. I'm like, dude, this lump is massive. It's like, I'm like, no, dude, I'm like, yeah, I've broken this so many times. We can't see it. But I see it every day, I wake up and look in the mirror and I go, wow, I need to get that fixed. It's really just personal. You think about yourself, ugh, I, I wish I, I, I don't have a six pack like the guy in the magazine. Ugh, God, I can't go to the beach and take my shirt off because I don't look like, you know, Fabio. Uh, this is like 30 years ago, Fabio. For <laughs> <laughs> Not Fabio now, he's kind of little. Um, you know, it's all about yourself and, and that, and, that in yourself. If you don't have confidence in yourself, you're not going to have confidence to do anything. And that's what people are going to pick up on more than anything else, is a lack of self-confidence. Because we can see it. Mm -hmm. After this panel, walk around the con. You'll see the individuals we're talking about that don't have that self-confidence. They're the ones sitting by themselves. They're the ones alone. They're the ones not talking or hiding on their phones at a con. I get it. Technology is great. But the ones that are in the corner like this, for periods of time, that's a lack of confidence. They're not willing to get up and overcome whatever that roadblock is that you're here overcoming right now. 
That's the one thing I am very grateful that the Marine Corps taught me. Confidence. Confidence. You may be so full of shit that your eyes are brown, but if you sound confident, they will believe you. That's a core. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, heard, I heard the core. Yep. <laughs> Marine Corps. Sound like my prior drill sergeants. I was a corporal, and it was instant um, decisions, instant orders. You got to be yep. a leader, and I wasn't, and I had to learn very fast, and it forced me to be somebody, somebody I wasn't, and it really helped. How we overcame that in the military? You have, if you give an order, obviously you have to do it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts, right? But when you have to make decisions on your own, and you sit there and you go, this is what I want to do. We're going to use the parade convention as an example. I'm going to a furry con and I'm going to have fun, okay? Then you stop having fun. Why are you not having fun anymore? Is it because you're not pushing yourself? Is it because you're not meeting new people? It's because you don't know anyone, you're not hanging out with anyone? You don't have anyone to go to pizza with, right? Um, you have to go, okay, why am I not doing that? Screw it, I'm going to go do it. Mm -hmm. And then you go, you're going to the pizza place and you just, hey, you know, hey, we were hanging out at the panel yesterday. You want to go get some pizza? And then in your mind, before you even ask that question, I know what you're gonna think. I can't approach that person. They don't they, they barely know me. I just met them. Right? I don't weird, they're gonna think I'm weird and you with them. You have to stop that immediately. You've already made the decision that you're gonna find someone and get some pizza and have someone to hang out with, and you go do it. Right? So when we're in the military, jumping out of a freaking plane, right? You have two options. You either do it willfully. Or they throw you out. Oh yeah, <laughs> freaking swim it's ball. It's much better to do it yourself. <laughs> because when you get thrown out, it is not fun. Been there, done that. <laughs> jump out yourself. Jump out willingly. So you make the decision. I'm joining the military. I'm going airborne. It's natural that you're going to jump out of a plane. So when you go up to the plane and you're flying at five, six, seven thousand at a minimum elevation, and you're sitting at that door and the anxiety's there, you go. Well, these are my two options. Now I made the decision to be here. I can either be the boss of myself and go, I can do this, I can do this, do that. Yeah, let's do this, I'm, yeah, jump out. Or the guy behind you goes, and jump. <laughs> <laughs> one way or another, the end result's the same. But which one's gonna grow your confidence more? Either I did it myself, and I'm proud of myself. I, I did this thing, I overcame it. I talked to that random person that we've met at the social anxiety panel, and I said, hey, do you want to get some pizza? And they said, yes. Oh, man, yes, that feels great. And if they say no, guess what? They got other things to do. It's not usually that they don't want to get pizza with you, it's that they got other things to do. Okay, you move on to the next person. You don't worry about it, you don't let it bring you down. It, it just, it's, it's a natural part of cons, especially cons. Oh, God. <laughs> the orange spots. Go back to Arizona. <laughs> oh, here it comes. <laughs> Hi, Diesel. So, you know, that's, that's my thing is, if you make a decision, you have to act upon it yeah. and have confidence in that decision because you don't want to be that. You don't want to be questioning yourself because it does. I'm going to this party. Your friend said we're going to this party. You said, okay, you know, whatever, I guess, you know, it'll be, it'll, well, whatever, I guess we'll go, right? You kind of drag your feet along and then you get to the front doing like, you know, I don't, I don't think I can do this. And that's when you have, that's that point where you have to go, I can do this. I can do this. And you take that step. And as soon as you're in that front door, you go, okay, now the next obstacle we have to overcome. I can't go hang out with these people. No, I, I can't. We have something in common. We're furries. You go into a room party, usually there's a theme. So you're going there for a theme and a reason, not naming them, because it's not your talk. So there's a reason you're going to them, therefore you're there for a common cause. I can't do this. No, you can't. You've already made the decision to go. Or the decision just is interesting. You already made the decision to come here. How many people do you think didn't come to this panel? Because they started walking up to this door and just went, nope. I saw a couple people peek in and then and turn and walk away. Turn right around and walk away. That was the critical Which, moment. No judgment. Mm -mm. If they if they weren't ready. That was that. That, that was, was their barrier. That was their barrier record. that they couldn't pass. They'll come. They'll come next time. Mm -hmm. They'll see the online version. That maybe in a year from now, whenever we do the next panel, they will feel a little more confident themselves to come. But you all already made that step. You've already gotten to that point where you're. Yeah, let's do it. And then we just forced you to interact with other people. <laughs> <laughs> and you never know what 
that first step is going to bring. Taking myself, for example, I am currently in the process of opening up a business with JD Puppy. <laughs> if I would not have asked him to do that dance at AC last year, I'm not changing my, potentially changing my life by opening up Fuzzy Logic Escape Room. I hate JD. <laughs> because if I didn't actually have the confidence to approach JD, which I think I did through you, mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't be living by the beach in Long Beach, California right now. It's because of that situation that I met JD and he put me in a position for a company that had built me in the exact position and place and time to get me to where I'm at now and I am I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. I'm because of that decision to take that step forward. It's all about who you know, the people you know, the people you meet. And obviously not every interaction is going to potentially change your life like it has. Unless it's JD. Unless it's JD. <laughs> JD has that effect on that people. Effect, yeah. um, but you never know which ones will. Yep. So, go for it. It, it. I mean, I face this every day when I'm on the phone with architects or village planners, fire chiefs trying to get this building set up. I don't know what I'm doing. I have no idea. <laughs> Bye, Dave. Right. Bye, you know. She's been drinking already. <laughs> but I've learned how to appear confident. And I, it's funny, my friends have all told me, I used to have the reputation among my friends as never wanting to make a decision. I was totally cool with whatever everyone else decided, as long as I didn't have to be the one deciding. I still make decisions. It's true, you don't. Where do you want to go? I don't know, where do you want to go? I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's me. <laughs> but this new venture for me has forced me to be someone I'm not. And I've started making those decisions, and my friends have noticed. And they appreciate it, because all the weight isn't on their shoulders anymore. So, there's positives that can come from stretching that anxiety barrier that aren't just getting rid of the anxiety. It can kind of bleed into other aspects of your life, too. Absolutely. That's really cool. Once you gain confidence, which again, anxiety is all about confidence. It really is. A fear of snakes, phobias, it's confidence. You pick up a snake once, it's a snake. You're like, got it, not a problem. Like you might be scared of it, but you got it, right? You know, that one fear you've ever had and you finally overcome and tackle it. Now there's fears that, obviously phobias, what you're scared of. You know, if you're put in a small box, you're scared for life. You know, like me? No, I don't do small. I'm claustrophobic. But when it comes to confidence and other aspects like anxieties and other phobias, you overcome that. As soon as you have that confidence, it bleeds over to everything. I was doing this before, and now suddenly, you've had this great confidence. It was actually a lot of this from the fandom. I had confidence before the fandom. Um, I was a store manager uh, when I was 21. And then I joined the military um, a couple years after that. And that gave me an explosive amount of confidence, egotistical levels of confidence, yeah. which was very dangerous. Um, so you've learned to tone that back. You're not God as much as you pretend to be. And you're not invincible as much as you pretend to be. And then once I got out, I got into the fandom. And that was a real eye opener because that confidence had bled away completely where I was confident in my ability to speak to people that were higher above me, generals, you know, stuff like that. But my confidence in speaking with everyone else that wasn't technically above me in rank suddenly terrified me. I don't know how to act. Do I stand at attention? Am I afraid of rest? Do I have to keep my eyes focused on them the entire time? It was really weird. And so as I started developing that, I realized my soft skills had disappeared over the years. I had them when I was a store manager. I had a lot of people's skills and soft skills, but deteriorated over the years. It's a good skill. Anxiety, all that stuff sells skills. Um, confidence is a skill. I developed that, redeveloped that in the fandom. Once I redeveloped that, I suddenly had this great balance in life that I can now approach anyone, anyone on this planet, I don't care what your rank is and position, and I can be that person to talk to. I can sit there and talk to you. I can shake their hand. I can walk up to the POTUS and shake his hand. Um, I, I would can, rather punch yeah. him, sorry. Yeah. But the agents are more trained than I am. So, um, <laughs> but there's that, I can walk up to anyone, and that confidence has bled over into my personal life, which has made me wicked confident in everything I do. 
I don't care what it is. I can think of anything, a new material, and be confident in what I've read is what I know. And it's great. Honestly, it is. And all you have to do is wake up every day and literally just tell yourself it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. today's, today's the day I'm going to grow a little bit. I'm going to do something a little bit exciting. You know, that walk you do, you have a nice little place you go to walk to once in a while, walk a little bit further. Yeah. That one smoothie shop you never stop in at, but it looks kind of good, stop in. I finally did that at a place near my rush, near my apartment. It's a little deli. Always looks good. Always passed up. It's like, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know anyone goes here. It's kind of weird to just show up randomly. I said, no, today's the day. And I did it. It's great. I had a great monster ball suit. I loved it. Um, add, a, add that little bit here. Hey, you guys going to go out and get some pizza? You see someone local here that you know you didn't really meet? Grab them. Hey, you guys want to get some pizza? Want to get some subs? Want to go down to the con shop? Want to go to the dance? Let's go to the other stand. You want to go hang out at the other stand? And now you have that. You've grown. You've added a friend. You've grown that confidence level because you've already taken the first step. What you don't realize is the fact that you already came here has already developed your confidence. You've overcame that barrier. You walked through that magical door, which is a very scary door, I know, because that door is like Narnia. Once you walk in here, we're going to notice if you leave. And we, Kaiser, softly. Um, and now you're here, you know we're in control. And now you've already taken that step. Now you're not in control anymore, we are, for the panelists. And you listen. And now you've had to overcome this, I got closer, people are in my bubble, it's weird, but I'm okay with it. They're here. Oof, does anything bad happen? No, everyone's still alive, right? Looks you like it. Maybe met someone? Yeah, I saw a heartbeat. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm dying yeah, years no, ago. I <laughs> You've all maybe have met someone that you didn't know already. And if not, I highly encourage you mm -hmm. to meet someone else in this room that you haven't met. And maybe go do something. Like go to the first shooting 101, 102 panel. That Which is, is coming up right after coming this. Coming up right after this way? panel. That, that way. You know? That, that way. way. <laughs> that, she's not that way. Which, uh, is this panel number that is? That is four, three, two. That's why she's They're clearly so labeled. Go away, No way, I'm not coming in. Oh my god. Oh god. Okay, so how I was forced to meet this guy is he actually crashed one of my panels. Like this. <laughs> yeah, like this. And so it brought me out of my comfort zone. When I'm in, when I'm a panelist, I'm in charge of my own panels. And suddenly he came in and started wrecking stuff, and I was really like, ugh, what are you doing? And, but hey, you know, now I'll be a friend. And I've actually known a lot of his friends now. And they love me more than they love him. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are we talking about? How you suck. <laughs> and by the way, folks, everything they're saying is actually a form of therapy called prolonged exposure. Therapists use this to get people over fears and PTSD and all kinds of anxiety disorders. So. Yes, that's where I call in. Is, uh, I have many anxiety disorders. Most of my life, I just felt ill and sick. And we found out when I was about 25, I'm just in a constant panic attack. Oh, yeah. And PTSD right here. I have a yeah. service dog for it. Yeah, I have PTSD as well. Um, but it took that long to actually get me on medications to stop those 24-7 anxiety attacks. Mm. And still, if I miss a dose, I go right back into an anxiety attack. Yep. And uh, that's another good point that I wanted to bring up that they didn't bring up is you could try all this stuff. And if it's still impossible, if it's impeding you yep. actually living your life, don't be afraid to see a psychologist. Yeah, yep. literally trained professionals. Yep. Yeah. They they're gonna take your money you. and make you feel better. Hopefully. Hopefully, um, yeah. Or <laughs> they're gonna do their best. Or if you're in the military, it's free. And there's actually lots more in the military. Um, um, seeing psychologists, I just do want to add a note. There are, a, from my experience, there are a lot of them out there that are in it just for the money. Mm -hmm. So yep. every time I move, it takes two to three different ones before I tell, find one that's yeah, there to help. Honestly, if you're looking at psychiatrists and psychologists, both, um, yes. one might give you medication, one off. One gives you medication, one gives you therapy. Right, and um, you, you have to find, you yeah. know, they usually go hand in hand, and you need to find the ones that work for you. One, one may be too eager to jump in and go, here's meds. Yeah. And you go, mm, I kind of want to try therapy first. And then one person's like, dude, I don't do medication at all. It's always going to be therapy. And then that might not work for you. <laughs> find the happy balance. I actually have something to add on to that because I've been through three commander direct, uh, direct evaluations before mm -hmm. and like fucking seven different psychiatrists, therapists, whatnot. They all 
failed miserably. I hate going to the mental health clinic on base and whatnot. And I actually found out the perfect thing for me was is to have a friend. Is mainly what yeah. it is for me. Is that you have a friend in order to be able to go with them and just do something a little bit more and you just have to add on to that. Because what is it, like you said, one line give me pills and just send me on my yep. way. And I well, that's the military, them. though. Yeah. I saw bottles and bottles well, of pills. They did send pills. me on base, too, because of certain yeah. other personal yeah. matters. But, uh, <laughs> they didn't want to deal with it. They were off base. And I went to another one who was a part of the military one source. Yep. And then they just pretty much gave me a book. They made me buy a book that was seen on their shelves off Amazon. Yeah. So it's like, I said, you know what? I feel like shit right now. I want to change the way that I've been living, so I'm going to go ahead, and even if it feels like I'm going to freaking die if I go out on a roller coaster like you were saying, it's the most horrible feeling in the world. I made myself do it. I made just some friends like the LFC 2014, 2015, I forgot. But like you said, I went out and I had giant rockets downstairs with them, and I got to know them, and you know, it kind of opened up a lot of doors. It's about making that choice for yourself and taking the steps necessary. And, by the way. Unfortunately, <laughs> we are out of time. Sorry, and we, then, there is a uh, panel butting up right next to ours. Uh, <laughs> however, if you guys have really questions, concerns, you're more than welcome to tweet at us. Yep. Direct message if you don't want to be, I wouldn't be public. It's fine, just direct message. Yep. Really creepy. Um, my, my Telegram is the same as my Twitter, if you'd rather use Telegram. No, 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 no. Totally okay. I'm Scrub Puppy on Telegram. I don't know my Twitter is. It's the Super Odyssey. Remember, everybody is different, so yeah, different things work for different people. Yep, absolutely. Fidgets. I have, this is technically my anxiety bag. I have everything in here to help me with anxiety attacks. Thank you everyone for coming. That sucks that everything was failing at the last second. No, there's no wireless in there. So I was doing that, couldn't get it, and then I said, screw it. There's something else going on. Fingers are all tired and sore right now.